live from the virtual Iowa Speedway. We welcome race fans, one and all, back to Green Flag TV, where tonight we get set to duke it out for our second take of this third race of the TNGG IEL Truck Series season. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the show. My name is Old Rambo, bringing you all of the coverage here tonight from the beautiful Iowa Speedway for race number three of the Saturday Night Truck Series. The Phoenix Raceway was certainly a racetrack that saw a lot of action kicked up in the last week or so, but it was made by uh, the decision was made post race by uh, by uh, of course the TNGG administration that because of a, a couple of problems that there were in terms of setting up the lobby and different parameters that were not accurate to the TNGG rulebook, they were going to be striking last week's race from the record. So the points have been effectively reset to what they were prior to last week's race. Any drivers that made points out of their debut start did not get those points, and they have been wiped from the point standings altogether, which leaves your championship board looking a little something like this, with Paul Witt at the top of the points board still, with Zane Bailey down in second, and Scott Rankin now picking up that third position. The top four still separated by only four points, uh, and the top six separated by 11. So for now, it's looking like this is how these are going to line on up, but we should be ready to go racing for what could now this time be the real third race of the TNGG IL Truck Series, the Hog Pack uh, 150 from the Iowa Speedway. Iowa has long been a racetrack that has never failed to put on a good show. And of course, uh, one of the big moments on Green Flight 2 over the last little while was an absolutely incredible move uh, incredible battle for the lead, the three-wide battle for the lead that ended up making it to iRacing's top five highlights of the month uh, over in February. So it is definitely a track where we're going to be in for a lot of really hard-fought racing action here tonight. Truck still working their way around the racetrack here in qualifying as we are uh, definitely looking set to try and take this race up high and wide and make ourselves with an absolutely phenomenal racing evening. Right now, you're watching John Holiday in the number nine Toyota Tundra ripping his way around for his first lap of qualifying. He will put himself down with a uh, 22nd place for qualifying so far. Still has got potential, though, to punch his ticket a bit further up the grid as he works his way deeper and deeper into turn numbers three and four, seeing if he can potentially get himself in with a good effort here off of turn number four, sliding out of turn four and across the line. Will it be any improvement for the number nine? It sure will. He'll put himself to 13th place on the grid. Good show there for John Holiday. Michael Gudge in the meantime working his way through the trioval, he'll put himself to 12th place. So Gudger, who came home with a podium last week at uh, Phoenix, ended up being stricken from the record, not even going to make it into the top 10 in qualifying. Currently, 30 trucks have put down lap times as of right now. And uh, looking a bit further down, you got Luigi Gonzalez, Selena Thompson, and Josh Berry, all that have still yet to put down some qualifying times as well. So there is definitely a possibility that we're going to be in for an absolutely wild night of racing action here tonight. Remember, you have to put down a qualifying lap if you want to find yourself being officially scored in tonight's race. And right now, 30 of those 33 have put down times. Now, granted, Josh Berry did go out and attempt to make a attempt to make a qualifying effort for the drive of the number 15 Ford F-150. Uh, he did attempt both laps in both laps either struck the wall or spun out and went off course, which is why he is not currently on the qualifying sheets, but that should be enough. Granted that he made an effort to try to put himself uh, onto the boards here tonight. So it looks like it could be a 31 trucks uh, getting a score for points as nobody else has any more time to put themselves in with any kind of uh, extra qualifying efforts at the tail end of things. So five seconds left then on the qualifying chart says uh, we'll look set to go racing for 150 laps around this point. 875 mile circuit in Newton, Iowa. And starting this race on the pole, it will be, of course, none other than your defending champion himself. It is going to be Aaron Raymond starting on the pole for Raymond Motorsports with Scott Rank beside him on the front row. Jim Duda will be down in the number three spot with Jeff Gilmore back in fourth. Paul Witt is in fifth with Julian Bell uh, Ballou in sixth. John Held is in the number seven spot with Brennan Gregg down in eighth. Carson Baytal is in ninth. Mark Morton making his rookie debut, going to be in 10th. Brandon Groover is in 11th with Michael Gudger in 12th. Thomas Lane Jr. is in 13th with John Holiday down in 14th. George Rincon is 15th. Zane Bailey is 16th. LeBon Van Leer rounds out the top half of this field in 17th with Mike Campbell in 18th. 
To close out row number 10, you've got Ryan McRoberts and Rick Schneider with Mike Allen in 21st, Tom Goker 22nd, Cody Ricketts 23rd, and Zach Groover in 24th. For there, you've got Mike Bagwell, RJ Buchanan, John Bawalda Jr., Robert Amaro, Dale Rapp, Noah Swaffer, Josh, uh, Josh Berry, Luigi Gonzalez, and Selena Thompson, the bottom three drivers not logging lap times in the 10-minute qualified session preceding this race. So qualifying is fully guaranteed. We are locked in and ready to go racing here tonight for 150 laps and 100, uh, sorry, not 100 trucks, 33 trucks. It is going to be no doubt an absolute uh, uh, an absolutely chaotic race here tonight. Just waiting on, now on Selena Thompson to grid up, but she will be missing the call. So Selena Thompson will not make it to the green flag of this race. And seeing as how we've got a little bit of extra time here now before we get ourselves sorted for green flag race in action, we're going to take ourselves with a little step back here. We'll be able to thank, of course, the folks that helped to get the lights on here over the TNGG IL Truck Series. Tonight's race is brought to you by Network Alliance for Veterans. NAV is a program that informs veterans of programming available and services throughout the Northeast area of Indiana. Network Alliance also looks outside of Indiana for extra benefits and programs and benefits veterans along with their families. All while promoting programs on the NAV site, such as Veterans of Foreign Wars, the American Legion, and the Fraternal Order of Eagles. Cecil Ross works with other organizations, such as the Women's Veterans Alliance out of California. Lastly, the Network Alliance for Veterans YouTube channel contains live stories and podcasts and advertises various events and benefits. So the Network Alliance for Veterans keeping the lights on here for the Team GG IAL Truck Series. It is a beaming sun down onto the racetrack here today, but uh, 88 degrees Fahrenheit will be the track temp down there. So looking like effectively perfect conditions I cannot imagine anything that will see this race turn into a fluke. This is bound to shake up to be one absolutely exciting show for us here tonight. And your defending champion, Aaron Raymond, who was looking set to win last week before being put in the wall, will be on the pole tonight. As the Bass Pro Shops, number six, Chevy Silverado will take us into turn numbers three and four. As always, we're happy that you're joining us here on this beautiful Saturday night. The pace truck dives into pit road as we will get set to duke it out. 150 laps underway in Iowa. Aaron Raymond leads lap number one to green. The rest of the pack starting to high tail and after him down to the turn numbers one and two. Scott Rankin looking for the inside line of the number six this time by coming off of turn number two. Still trying to hunt to the bottom, but right now Raymond has pulled clear and he will continue to lead the way at the end of the first couple of laps. Jim Duda trying to sweep around the outside of Rankin to pick up the number two spot while Scott Rankin will drop down to third. And the Aussie gonna fall to that third position, but still remains for now on the podium. So we're single filed out all the way back, and now Jim Duda trying to look for the inside. See if he can make a lunge on that number six Silverado down the back stretch. And into turns three and four. Nothing doing though. Raymond pulls clear, and we keep ourselves under green fly conditions. Further in the pack, Zane Bailey and John Holliday scrapping for 13th on the racetrack with. Holiday to the outside of Bailey. And the driver of the number nine, Toyota Tundra. Hanging this one high and wide around the outside line. Scott Rankin gonna lose out on the third spot potentially here as Paul Witt. A race winner already in season number five. Looking for the uh, inside. Can he clear off a of two? He sure will. So Paul Witt clears with the uh, third spot, bumping Scott Rankin down and out of the podium here tonight. So long way to go, we got cars in the wall. Caution number one is just lap number six as John Held has been put into the outside fence. 
uh, Aaron Raymond picks up the pace truck on the exit of turn two. As we've piled them up, coming out of the fourth and final corner. Take a look back. This is John Held. Michael Gudger looking to the inside. And has there well, a bit of a blink there and looking like a bit of net code there from Gudger to the side of Held. Spins the 47 truck around and just drilled in the door by the 41 of Brandon Groover and then takes a wicked hit to the outside wall. Hard, hard leg. Take another look. Clobber that outside wall pretty good as well. So Hell with a considerable amount of damage on his machine. Not the way the Canadian wanted to kick his race off as they'll take a couple of firm hits into the wall and then Brandon Gruber. This is what he saw on board with the roof cam. 47 gets punted around and just nowhere to go. Tried to slow up and he just couldn't do it and that's all it takes. Working lap number seven now as this pack continues to cycle around the Iowa Speedway under caution flag number one tonight. Did not take long before we got our first yellow flag. Now granted that one was more net code based than anything, but still not an ideal way to kick off the race tonight. But hey, still a long way to go. Over 140 laps still remain. We'll be back in a moment on Green Flag TV. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill-based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series in officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Lights are out aboard the iRacing pace truck. We will go green flag racing this time by with Raymond, the race leader, opting for the outside lane for the restart this last time by. So again, racing action looking set to kick off in earnest here tonight. Look at my race control, not deeming that anybody was responsible for that mess. It was, of course, uh, was a looks like a racing incident caused by Netcode purely for caution flag number one. Green flag is back in the air. We will get back to racing action here tonight. One truck immediately makes a look to the inside, way in the background. But Jim Duda trying to punch his ticket through to the race lead. Raymond trying to carry the outside momentum. Do you make this work coming out of turn number two and down the back stretch? Could we see Jim Duda go to the point? Doesn't look like it so far. Raymond continues to hug that outside wall and now tries to pinch him in. Remember, progressive banking here at Iowa makes that outside an absolute doozy. And they remain firmly transfixed in an all-out dogfight for the race lead. I think Raymond thought he might be able to get a better launch off of the line than he did which is why he is now struggling to try to hang on to the race lead here. All the while, Jim Duda sweeping to the bottom. Duda going to clear. Raymond immediately with a crossover. Going to look back for the inside, down to turn three. 
Raymond tried to cut him right back, but Duda holding his ground up on the top. Now it's Duda's turn to try and rip the lip. And Jim Duda will be able to get Claire off of turn two. Good show there from Duda. Ballou and Gilmore are getting into it a little bit as well as they almost had it coming together in turn three. Mark Morton and Julian Ballou trying to do it out and the uh, three chi Silverado Morton making good progress. He is of course running this race for the first time in the championship. I mean, he is gonna just barely scrape that outside wall entering turn number one. The 27 of Brennan Gregg gonna try to make a lunge in there as well. Ballou just behind. Trying to see if he can charge him down to the Toyota Tundra, but here goes Morton, cutting back for the inside. Going for it, down to the turn one. Craig tracking up and wide out of turn two. And Morton forced to tuck back in line. Ballou right to the back bumper in three. Made an effort, couldn't get there. But there's a lot of fierce act going on, to the, on down on the racetrack, including three wide down to the turn of one. The 13 up top, McRoberts in the middle, and the 98 of uh, Josh Berry down to the low side. Berry's going to lose out. Now, Berry 15, scored as a 15, but running the 98 truck right now on the racetrack. So a bit of a scoring error there. It would, uh, well, scoring error, quote unquote. He's been assigned to a 15 truck. He's just running the 98 on his machine, though, for the meantime. As he battles for 17th place, coming down in the turns one and two. Up the road, Aaron Raymond thinking about trying to make a run back for the race lead, looking to the inside of Duda. And so close, almost nothing between them. As they run into the turn numbers one and two, once again on board with Raymond. But the driver to high game Vermont as they charge down the back stretch. Duda, looking like he may very well try to break clear. Meanwhile, again, further in the background, drivers like Cody Ricketts and Josh Berry still scrapping it out for spots. The Bon Van Leer in the fray as well in the Defastinol, number 60. Trying for three wide again, down to turn number three. Three abreast they go. Who's going to be forced to back out? Looking like that may go down to Josh Berry down to the inside as Berry will be the first to yield. Did not get nearly as good of a momentum as he thought he might coming around turns one and two and down through the tri-oval. And the 13 of Bagwell in the mix as well. And oh boy, the 72 and Berry's number 98 continue to scrap it out. Looking for three again, and this won't last for too long. We've seen it go for several laps at a time, but it's never, uh, it's never infinite, right? Sooner or later, it's gonna go wrong, and it almost goes wrong there as Van Leer gets unsettled by Bagwell off of four. A big move to the inside of turn, uh, turns one and two. As Josh Berry trying to pick up whatever pace he can muster. Mike Allen. Sorry, LeBron Van Leer with nowhere to go off of turn four as Josh Berry going to get squeezed in. And yikes, I think finally we're able to calm it down, but not by much. I mean, these guys are absolutely going for it here. Down the back stretch and into turn three. And this, remember, for spots well down the field. We're talking 14th on back. They're battling for it right now. 
The midfield battles are never too far away as Barry started the pole clear. Cody Ricketts now heads the field with Rick Schneider, Van Leer, Bagwell, and Allen all in the mix along with Moore. Oh, trouble! Look out into the outside wall goes Rick Schneider. Hard crash, and around goes the 60 of, Le of Van Leer. Hard crash on the back straightaway. And caution flight number two flies at 26. Take a look back as they come off of a turn number two. I think Rick Schneider got a bit crossed up and the 60 and the 13 and nowhere to go. The 03 of Schneider gets kicked up in the air. As they all wreck down in the turn number three, we've got multiple trucks coming down to pit road, including all of the race leaders. Everyone from Jim Duda on back to Luigi Gonzalez coming into pit road. Jim Duda, the first truck down. Let every lap after getting around Aaron Raymond, will he be the one to beat them out of pit road as well? Fuel only for the 053. He is out. So one by one, drivers making their way up and around on the exit of turn numbers uh, one, or, or the exit of turn numbers one and two as. We'll try to get another look back at this one as uh, LeBon Van Leer He's just, it's not going to go his way, you know. And Van Leer, I think, uh, uh, maybe the 13 truck did a bit of chasing there, you know. I want to get a ride on board with Mike Bagwell, and uh, we'll get a better look and see what all went down. This is on board with Bagwell. Yeah, there was a bit of chasing going on there, a little bit of a Constantina, I feel, like that kind of uh, led to all of this. This is on board with Van Leer. Man, what a ride on the back of, uh, on the back of the 0-3 of Rick Schneider. Take a ride on board with the deck lid. I mean, that truck getting kicked up into the air, it's really something. Get another look and look at how high that 03 truck gets off the ground. The 60 just got underneath, and he actually landed on top of the deck lid of LeBon Van Leer as well, and that could very well have caused a lot more damage that we didn't see. It's a wild, wild wreck there for lap number 26 for, uh, to put us under our second caution flag of the night. The lights remain on board on uh, aboard the iRacing pace truck with two laps to go before we get back to green flag racing. And that is due to Carson Baytal being down and out of this race, a lap down. The driver of the 59 truck pulling it down and in relatively early. One thing I do want to kind of talk about right now, there is live race control now for these TNGG races. That was one other thing after Phoenix. It was determined that live race control would definitely be uh, almost a necessity going forward. So they have brought on some live race control for tonight. And with that, that has resulted in a few extra penalties now that could be doled out mid-race. So for the self-spin penalties, if it's without contact, it's an EOL for... The second and third spins, nothing for the first, and then a either well plus a drive through for the fourth incident. Now, Michael Gudger on that last restart did actually receive an end of the longest line penalty for causing yellow flag number one, as I have been corrected by said race control. Second at fault yellow is Neil well with the drive through, as is the third. So you don't want to be colliding with drivers all too often here. You could find yourself uh, with a bit of a messy run in the races going forward.
Well, we'll get back to green flag racing this time by as the pack going to work into turn numbers three and four. Green flag back in the air. We are underway once more. Jim Duda. Oh, boy. We almost went four wide for the lead down to turn number one. Duda trying to hang on against Zachary Groover down to the bottom. Raymond trying to make it three wide. Fanning out down the backstretch. Caution is out immediately. As Robin Amaro turns it sideways in turn two. Robin Amaro will spin around and will uh, get a look back on what happened to the driver of the number 77 working out of turn numbers one and two. Rick Schneider right behind. Michael Allen up to the track as well, kind of squeezing Schneider in. But it looks like the 03 just comes up the track and dumps the 77. Turns Amaro around, and Amaro will just barely back it into the outside wall. Right on board with the 0-3. I'll give a bit of a better backup there for that one. Again, all board with the 0-3 here of Schneider. Well, I mean, from that angle, it kind of looks like Amaro comes down a little bit. We'll see what race control thinks of this one, but uh, taking a look from the air, and perhaps this might give a better insight. Quite possibly a little both, you know, one coming down, uh, one coming up, and then one goes around. But this puts us to caution flag number two. Coming up over the next couple days on uh, Green Flag TV, the ASRL Next Gen Cup Series runs out to the Windy City to race on the streets of Chicago on Sunday night at 7.25 p.m. Eastern Time. The High Tide Race of the Ember Racing Designs Cup Series will see their second race down at the Rockingham Speedway on Monday night at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. And the Ole Miss Rail Truck Series will be swinging down to the Darlington Raceway at the track, too tough to tame at 8.45 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday night. That along with, of course, the Beer League and the Speed Times Plus Cup Series at their regular shows. TNGG will be off next week because they will be making room for the VSCA Sports Car Championships 12 hours of Sebring for the third point scoring race on what will be a very long endurance race, the second longest of the championship. And then the Sunday after that, the Classic IndyCar Series will make their long-awaited return to broadcasting and will make their debut at the Circuit of the Americas on Green Flag TV for their 10th anniversary season. Right now, a lot of these laps have run at the yellow flags, and cautions at Iowa are not short, right? I mean, you can tell there's been a lot of yellow flag pacing so far from this humble little circuit in Newton, Iowa. And it does make you wonder, perhaps it's impacting the morale of some of these drivers if we're going to be seeing another caution-filled race like we did last week at the Phoenix Raceway. There were a lot of yellow flags in Avondale. We're certainly not on, the tr uh, not on the trend to break that streak this time by. I mean, 33 trucks, and this is what you get. Well, every single truck adds that little bit of a chance, a little bit more that two of them are going to make contact with each other. And right now, despite it being a semi-loose racetrack, all of the incidents have been a result of two or more trucks colliding with one another. Jim Duda. The 053 Toyota Tundra will be looking to take that machine up and around. 
Once again, the outside line being a very popular choice for restart lane, as it so often is at Iowa. We saw this when the Ole Miss RL Truck Series went here as well on Tuesday night, it's just a couple months ago. So I think we uh, could be in for a bar burner. Pace trucks off once again. We'll look to take this one to the green flag. Duda trying to pull clear. Raymond looking for the inside into one and two. Tracking up from the bottom and just going to be able to tuck in between Scott Rankin and Jim Duda. Duda maintains the race lead off of turn four. Has not been the way of the pole sitter so far tonight as Duda has been on an absolute tear. He has led the most laps so far today. Now granted, a good chunk of them have been under caution. And again, as I so often say, like a broken record, a yellow flag in a field this size and a track this size, never gonna be too far away as we space it out, double file all the way back. McRoberts, Bagwell, Barry, Gulker, Gudger, all under a blanket. And now looking for three wide. Here comes the two of Tom Gulker lunging to the inside of Ryan McRoberts. Picks off the 23 as Josh Barry will clear. Already almost a third of the way deep. And look at how much these trucks are bumping over the uh, lip there. Coming out of turn two. We're focusing up a lot of this mid-pack battle, but there's also one up for fourth between Jeff Gilmore and Brandon Gregg as well that has been looking to take shape. Uh, over the last little while, as Jeff Gilmore trying to keep Brandon Gregg at bay for the number four spot while simultaneously trying to attack Scott Rankin for third. Looking like Jeff Gilmore will manage to get around Scott Rankin for the number four spot while everyone else behind continues to scrap it out like it's the last lap. Looking as though he might be getting a little bit more separation. I'm seeing a few different packs starting the form. You got first to about uh, eighth and then ninth on down to 14th. Then 15th on down throughout the rest of the field just in behind. So I think right now, a lot of this pack, they're trying to get themselves settled for the long term. You're trying to get themselves into a long haul mindset. It's so difficult to do, though, when you're racing in such close proximity to so many different drivers as uh, Jeff Gilmore on an absolute tear. Now, Gilmore did come down on lap 26, and he did take fresh tires, which is part of where we see Gilmore's speed come from. Picks off Raymond for a second, and he has started to really apply the pressure to Jim Duda, trying to see if he can mount a charge for the race lead. Gap continues to close a quarter of a second. Continuing to shrink. I think Duda could be falling here from the top step within the next uh, lap or two. Gilmore gets to the back bumper, looks for the inside. Thought about a launch into turn one, decided against it. Trying to utilize all of that mid corner and corner exit speed. A bit of a Bit of an indecision there for Jim Duda startles Gilmore into taking the outside line to turn four. And here we go, Jeff Gilmore to the bottom of Duda. Gunning in for the race lead around the inside. They've pulled out over a second from Aaron Raymond just behind. No 
Gilmore's got the nose in front. Is it enough to lead the lap? It just is. Gilmore led lap 47 by only a couple thou. The Irwin Tool Silverado. Oh, not clear yet. Duda still fighting this one out around the top. This is fantastic racing. And finally, Jeff Gilmore will clear for the lead. Jeff Gilmore taking this one away. Aaron Raymond and Scott Rankin in a battle for third as well. Trying to see who will come out on top of the final podium position. And these are two drivers that are not fond of each other. Scott Rankin has expressed his animosity for Aaron Raymond in the past. So no surprise that they are not taking it easy on each other in the slightest. How about Zane Bailey and Julian Ballou? Going to go to a brass down in the turn number one. And the battle for ninth on back. Baloo trying to carry the momentum around the outside while Bailey maintains his run on the bottom. Longest green flag run we've had so far tonight. And we'll cross over that threshold a third of the way through this race. 100 laps to go. Blue continuing to race it out here with Zane Bailey as they look to dive now to turns three and four. Blue going to clear for the top. He's in tonight. Further down the field, Ryan McRoberts, Dale Rabbit, Moore, John Ball, the junior, scraping the outside wall. This is. Uh, for some of the last spots on the running order. Oh, the bottom of Lear gets into Dale Rabb and nearly loops the number 60 truck coming out of turn two. He'll fade to the bottom. But just be able to make it happen. Yikes, has that got a bit hairy coming out of turn two. Up the road, Rincon, Ricketts, Gonzalez, all in the grudge match. Luigi Gonzalez is going to take that one down to the inside. And the caution flag will fly. LeBon Van Leer and Allen tangle it up again in turn two, uh, turn four. And we've got caution flag number four of the night. At lap 53. Taking a look back. LeBon Lear dives it in deep into turns three and four. Starts to drift up the racetrack. Right across the nose of Michael Allen and oh that is a hard lick into the outside wall. Violent crash coming out of turn number four. As Mike Allen and LeBon Van Leer both get hooked hard into the outside fence. And that's as about as violent of a hit as he can get as they slide to the bottom. The whole field will come back to pit row this time by Mark Morton will get the lucky dog free pass to get himself back onto the lead lap. Jeff Gilmore leads them down. But critically, he is taking fuel only, it looks like. Everyone else will be taking tires. So now it's Gilmore that's going to be on the back foot for the restart. And I don't anticipate him holding the lead for long. Very split decision with several drivers. Take a look back at the uh, at the replay here. This is on board with Van Leer. Hang on. Hard lick right into the fence. And then this is from Allen.
And now Drew Lynch is to try to avoid him, and it just doesn't work that way. So Mike Allen going to pull it behind, well, go for a flick spin, it looked like, before getting himself back on the racetrack. But uh, a difficult ride, and multiple trucks with big damage. You watch the Hog Pack 200, sorry, the Hog Pack 150, and the TNGG IL Truck Series on Green Flag TV. Coming up on 91 laps to go when we take the green flag this time by. Kind of going to get a look here if we can at the pit strategy and how everything is panned out, at least for the top 20. Well, more for the top 10, really. I mean, a lot of the drivers outside of the top 10 opted to take four tires on that last pit stop run. But you look throughout the rest of the top 10, right? I mean, there's a lot of split decisions. Uh, George Rincon only taking two tires down in eight. Gilmore taking fuel only along with Luigi Gonzalez. Josh Berry also taking fuel, uh, sorry, two tires. And then looking like Thomas Lane Jr. as well. Also only taking fuel. Everyone else effectively on fresh tires. So I have a feeling we're going to get our next caution here in pretty quick succession from what we've seen so far. Pace trucks down and into pit road. Jeff Gilmore to the restart zone. We're back to green. Oh, up the track goes Josh Berry into the outside wall in the big way. The 98 car shoved up and wide. He'll slam the outside wall. We'll keep it green. Oh, the rest of the pack. Dog fighting that a turn number four. Gilmore on old rubber having to try to fend off a lot of these new tire runners. Jim Duda has the inside line. Outside is usually more dominant, but Raymond's got nowhere to go. He's going to push Gilmore out of the way. Scott Ranga puts him three wide. Duda clears for the lead. Raymond for second. And Scott Ranga will get around him for third as well. So the driver of the number 49 truck trying to run down the six and ram it all over the back bumper of Jim Duda trying to go for the lead. Takes it low into three and four. Jim Duda working the top, trying to keep Raymond down low. The racing action never stops at Iowa until that yellow flag falls. And boy, is that ever a statement that continues to ring true as Man, Duda way up the hill in two and nearly into the outside wall. Further back, Thomas Lane Jr. falling back to Michael Gudger, Zane Bailey, and more. Luigi Gonzalez also in the fray, along with Josh Berry as well, losing a lot of time. This is a huge cluster of trucks from about ninth on down.
remember, no fast pairs either as, oh my gosh, the 54. Gonzalez caught in the middle, nearly wiping out the 72 of Cody Ricketts. But again, no fast pairs are on hand for these trucks, so if you get damaged, that could spell the end of your race. You don't get a mulligan at Iowa Speedway, only at Bristol and Martinsville. Raymond, you saw, try to look to the inside of Duda. Couldn't make the lunge for the lead. But boy, was there ever an attempt. Rincon gets in deep into turn one to put uh, Gonzalez down to spot. Once again, Naren Raymond looking to the inside of Jim Duda to try to pick off the race lane. They nearly come together as Duda really trying to squeeze Raymond in down low. They will remain side by side down the front stretch and into turn one. Duda. And he tried to carry around to the outside. Raymond still has the nose in. Tell you what, I mean, these guys do not know how to leave each other alone. It is the same story deeper in the pack. I mean, look at Gonzalez and Moore, all of this huge fight. The five of Bowoda giving a shot to the shorts of the number 54. Working off turn two down the back stretch. Bowoda to the inside of Gonzalez. Tags the back of it. Roberts nearly spins the 23. Give the momentum back to them, that number 54 truck on the outside. You don't want to cut away from this battle. I feel like we're going to get a wreck. It's going to be in this little closet here. They've been racing extremely aggressively so far all night long. 80 laps to go. One by one, laps continue to take away. The positions excuse me, continue to switch back and forth. Gonzalez, oh my gosh, pinching in. Bullwald just forcing him up and out. We're gonna try to look for three wide. And for the briefest of moments, it was looking like we may very well try to go for that three by three down to turn one. They laughed against it, but the thought is definitely there. Jeff Gilmore still on his backslide. He is down 10 positions now from where he started this race. 15 to continue to slide back after he came down to pit road under the latest yellow flag and has forced himself a bit further down and out. A good chunk of the front of the field started to break apart, it looks like, as you've got about... Uh, two seconds from first to six, and then another two seconds is there back to Michael Gudger, who runs in the number seven spot. Turning lap number 75 as once again we start to close in on the longest green flag run of this race. They're going strong for about 16 laps. Duda continues to lead with a four-tenth of a second gap over Aaron Raymond. Scott Rankin has dropped back 1.2 seconds from Raymond. He sits third, handed up a train of four with Brandon Gregg, Julian Ballou, and Paul Witt all in the, uh, all in the melee. And this is where all the battle's at, right? The mid to the rear of the field, Thomas Lane Jr. and Noah Swafford duking it out uh, right now for 17th with Jeff Gilmore in the fray to boot.
three wide and Lang gonna go up the middle. Swaffer down low. Gilmore trying to hang on with whatever he can get up on the outside. A caution now will surely mean just about everybody coming back in for fresh tires. We are past the halfway mark, so less than 75 laps to go. Swaver continues to lead from 16th place. Lane Gilmore, Bowaldo, McRoberts, Gonzalez, Rapp, Campbell, all in one big line. And right now, Jeff Gilmore is the punching bag as he started this race. Well, he started this restart in the lead, and now he has slipped all of them back to 19th and continues to drop because of how old the tires he's running on that machine. Forced to take fuel only so we could guarantee there was going to be another set further down the line. It's something that we so rarely talk about is the fact that these drivers very seldom have enough tire sets to make it to the end of this race. Almost every single race, one of these pit stops has to be fuel only. And I think a lot of drivers didn't quite realize that when they were coming down and started to take tires on just lap 20. These tires have to last a while. You may as well stretch them about as long as they can go and hope for those late race yellows. Officially into our longest green flag run of the night. Cody Ricketts and John Holliday is battling for the last spot inside the top 10 with the 72 and the 9. Going to go nose to tail. And then Gonzalez and Campbell. Still getting into the mix as, whoa, the 71 cuts way to the inside. And Luigi Gonzalez going to continue to try to fend him off on the top. And how about that? Looking like Gonzalez on old tires is actually going to be able to get it done. Keeps Mike Campbell behind him. You know, at a certain point, those fresh that fresh tire advantage does start to wear off. And it looks like that may very well have been what just happened to Mike Campbell as he's starting to kind of drop off a bit more. This is right now the only side-by-side -side battle on the racetrack. Well, at least it was as Campbell going to slip back once more. How about Rincon, Goker, and Held? Battle for 12th, separated by about six tenths of a second. Further up the road, a very similar battle developing. This is for second, third, and fourth. Sorry, third, fourth, and fifth. As Scott Rankin has uh, still remained secure in the number three spot. Right now, I think one of the big issues that I think uh, Jim Duda is having to struggle with, right, is where is lap traffic? And the answer is, well, not too far. It's a short track. You're going to catch up to the lap traffic uh, pretty quickly when you get to a race like this. There you can see the back markers entering turn three. That would be Robert Amaro that brings up the rear of the field. Amaro got turned by Rick Schneider early in this race and backed into the outside wall. Other than that, he has kept that truck completely clean. The number 77 now runs as the last truck on the lead lap in the number 27 spot. Battle for 12th started to close in a bit more. It went from being only 6 tenths separated down to about four and a half. So Tom Gulker's really been piling on the pressure. You're trying to catch up to Rincon here. And you know what? I think Gulker might be able to get him here if John Held doesn't get too involved. How about that? Gulker going to find the inside of Rincon for just the briefest of moments. 
the outside line. Rinkov will hang on, but Golker really trying to carry the drive through. Up front, Julian Ballou, Michael Gudgeon, Zane Bailey, sixth, seventh, and eighth, separated by even less, down to three and a half tenths of a second, and Gudger going to look for the inside. Michael Gudger, can he pick off Julian Ballou for sixth place as Ballou tracks wide out of turn two? No, sir. Gudger will tuck it back in. Josh Berry, Cody Ricketts, and John Holliday trying to keep touch with this big battle for the uh, the first spot outside of the top five. Working lap 91 of 150. How about this? Gudger actually trying to take a different approach here. The, trying to go around the outside instead of trying to attack down to the inside. We'll ride on board for a moment here with Gudger and see if this is actually going to pan out. Oh, Baloo caught on to his trick early. Now covering off that outside line. Not letting Gudger get it in. Josh Berry in the meantime has closed in on the battling as well. So Barry's quote unquote number 98, really the 15. Gonna make this now a four car battle for sixth on down. All of the changes in position we've been seeing so far over the last little while have been for 20th and 22nd. Dave Rapp, uh, sorry, Dale Rapp, Jeff Gilmore, Zachary Groover, and Luigi Gonzalez have been side by side for an astronomically long time now. Almost this entire race since he went green, they've been duking it out, and Gilmore about to lose the top 20 as well if Dale Rapp can have his way. Then you've got Mike Bagwell and Noah Swafford battling for 15th and 16th, and Swafford throws it in deep. Bagwell trying to go for the crossover. Out of turn number four, couldn't get it done. Swaver maintains the run and he'll pick off 15th. Further up the road, John Hell, Tom Golker. Both trying to run down, George Rincon. This racing is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, the Iowa Speedway, what did I tell you? It doesn't disappoint. Gudges finally caught Ballou. Trying to look for the inside out of turn two. Can he maybe get him off four? Josh Bear going to give a bit of a helping hand there to Gudger. Pushes him along through the tri-oval. And Michael Gudger takes the number six spot. Josh Berry, a truck that we saw have problems early on, is now making his way back towards the top five. Whoa, into the door of Michael Gudger. Big contact there coming out of turn number four. He'll lunge it deep into turn one to try to pick off the spot, at least from Ballou, which he will very much do. And Aaron Raymond is coming to pit road. Green flight pit stops about to commence. We'll be able to get that lap back once the field siphons through, so. Raymond is going to be down to the end, and now here comes Gudger Barry with a huge lockup trying to come down to pit road. Baloo comes in as well. 
Swafford is going to come in. Bagwell into pit road. Bawalda into pit road. Good chunk of the front runners coming in this time by. Looking like John Holiday may be considering it as well. In fact, he is. Holiday will take to pit road. So will Ricketts and Bailey. My big question is where does this battle for the lead stack up? Jim Duda going to make an early dive into pit road here. And trouble for Josh Berry as Berry is in fact, I think, had a problem somewhere on the racetrack and potentially spun sideways coming out of pit road. We'll look at that in just a brief moment, but right now a whole host of pit stops are underway, including for your race leader. Now, where does Scott Rankin pit in? Rankin continuing to stay out, so he thinks he's got some long run pace that he can try to open up the taps with here. That or he's trying to see if he can maybe go for an overcut and how about that? It's going to work for Scott Rankin as the yellow flag will fly right in the middle of the pit stop cycle. Oh, boy. Only seven trucks remain on the lead lap. A good chunk of them will be getting those laps back, though, now, courtesy of this caution flag that just came out. This is what happened to Josh Berry as he was leaving pit road. Chasing Michael Gudger, trying to get out first. And he's just going to loop the back end here as he leaves turn two, slides around, and well, keeps it out of the inside wall pretty okay. And Rick Schneider, in fact... Was not, I thought he might even leave pit road. He was not. He was uh, maybe trying to enter pit road here. That 03 truck's been wounded before, and not even that. He just lost the back end coming out of turn number four and hard hit into the outside wall. Heavy, heavy lick there for Rick Schneider. That's going to be a day and a day over for the 03 Silverado. Right on board. Just overcorrects, and that's all she wrote. Hard crash. Dale Rapp staying out. Not sure what the logic is behind that. So is Robert Amaral. Now, I believe they were both laps down, per question mark. I'm not sure what the logic is behind that. We'll uh, get a look at that in a moment, though. We're on a clutch of flight number five with 45 laps to go as it stands. 16 trucks believed to be on the lead lap. We'll be back in a moment. You're watching the TNGG IEL Truck Series on Green Flag TV.
Welcome back to Green Flag TV. Final wave arounds are happening before we go back to Green Flag Racing. We're coming to the close of our fifth caution flag of the night after a 40 lap almost Green Flag run. And a lot, and I mean a lot of trucks have got to wave their way around the pace truck. Sure enough, we will have 16 on the lead lap. Scott Rankin leads the way and he will be taken to the outside line for the restart. Everyone else trying to scramble to catch the tail end of the field. We will not be holding this, it looks like. Oh, we will be holding it. I think that's a smart play because, I mean, this field is completely discontroled. I mean, right now, ninth place is just entering turn three. And look at everyone behind just trying to catch up. That was a good call, I think, to hold this star for one more lap, give these guys a chance to catch up. You had practically the entire field almost having to take an extra wave around. Well, Brennan Gregg and Scott Rankin will be starting 1-2 on the racetrack with 40 laps to go. This race has been absolutely phenomenal so far, and uh, I know the original race three of Phoenix before it was scrapped from the points altogether was a bit of a rough ride. I think so far for this one tonight, this is by far been an absolutely massive improvement over the Phoenix race. I mean, the, the field size for one is even bigger than we had at Phoenix. But on top of that, it's just a better race. I mean, I think Iowa Speedway is a much better track than Phoenix. I think it's more natural. It flows a lot better. And gosh darn, the racing action is just as exciting. Pace truck is down and in as we'll get set to go back to green flag racing. Green flag's out. 40 laps to go. Scott Rankin pulling the outside of Brennan Gregg, and he'll clear for the race lead down the back stretch into turn number three. Gregg still trying to fight to the inside. He's not going to get there, though, as Rankin will be able to rip that top lane and clears out of turn numbers three and four. And the caution comes out. Tom Golker's around. He got a big crash on the front straightaway. Golker, Campbell, both with hard hits, and both drivers going to be effectively out of racing action tonight. Take a look back as Golker's down low, Campbell up high, coming out of turn number four. And has somebody gotten onto the power a bit too aggressively? Sure, get, yep. The 71 broke loose, hooks the two hard into the wall. Dale Rapp catches a piece as well. I think Thomas Lane Jr. may have got a piece of that. Oh, Gilmore took a hit. So about five, six trucks total that ended up getting actual damage as a result of that. That is unfortunate, though, for Mike Campbell. As you take another look at speed. Yikes. Well, despite that little bit of a hit, it wasn't enough to stop Thomas St. Jr. from taking the lucky dog free pass. As Scott Rankin has very much picked up the tail end of the field here. So 37 laps to go, and we're working this 60 yellow flag, and I still don't believe we are fully done wrecking uh, in race and action here tonight. I mean, the Iowa Speedway has been an attrition-filled race so far, but uh, it's been a fun race tonight, and I think a lot of these drivers will agree. I know LeBon Van Leer uh, right now begging to differ with that point uh, in the TNGG community, but uh, I, I've – I personally enjoyed it. I think a lot of these drivers have enjoyed it as well. I'm really curious about all that bounce we've been seeing on the outside. I've never seen it quite that severe, so I wonder if maybe something has changed about this racetrack and how that could be impacting the drivers. 
Only one race, uh, only one race, only one race remains in March for the TNGD IL Truck Series, and it will be the Avon Box 250 of the Bristol Motor Speedway two weeks from now. Next week we are off for the VSCA Sports Car Championships, 12 hours of Sebring. And then, of course, uh, five races, sorry, four races will be taking place in April, starting at Watkins Glen, moving to New Hampshire, Charlotte, and the Nashville Super Speedway. So right now, a lot of these drivers are packed up line astern. Want to once again shout out to the Network Alliance for Veterans, the folks that helped keep the lights on here in the TNGG IEL Truck Series, as, of course, uh, Cecil Ross networking with many other organizations, such as the Women's Veterans Alliance, uh, along with others. Uh, it, it, it's a great organization indeed, making sure the veterans get the benefits that they are very much entitled to. And of course, want to give a big thanks to Admin Box as well for coming on board late in the TNGG season. But uh, hey, better late than never. Of course, Admin Box sponsoring both the uh, TNGG IL Truck Series on Saturday nights as well as the Thursday night Speed Tires Plus Cup Series, which in of itself had an absolutely incredible race at Bristol that ended with a two-lap shootout to end it all when Ryan Shelton took his uh, second race win of the season. Should be getting the one-to-go signal here, 34 laps, and well, sorry, it'll be 34 laps to go when we take that green flag once more. We are into the final third of this race, and it's going to be pretty tight on fuel. I think we may have just enough to make it to the end of this race on fuel, but that is no guarantee we're going to have enough if it goes down to cautions. That is for overtime. So Scott Rankin will lead the way on the outside line. Pace truck is in. Once more to the restart zone. Green flag in the air. Once more, Brandon Gregg trying to punch his ticket down to the inside line, but Scott Rankin charging up to the top. Trying to see if he can secure that run against the Tech for Troops Toyota Tundra down to the inside. Rankin still ripping the top lane, but Gregg not giving in down to the bottom. Rankin clears with the race lead. And now back in the pack, a lot of battling going on. And all of this as well for the lucky dog spot. Josh Berry and Mike Bagwell fighting for 16th place. That is for the lucky dog spot. Robert Amaro being pushed up the racetrack. As Amaro forces a bit of three wide. Whoa! Bobbles loose and nearly slams into the outside fence. Mike Campbell is into pit road. Thirty-two laps to go. Thirty-one at the line. Steady on towards uh, that checkered flag. Looking to John Hell to try to hang on against Dale Rapp. Oh, contact! And Hell nearly around to the back stretch as he gets into Dale Rapp on the exit of turn two. Working lap number 121 as we continue to see these battles come to fruition. Right now, all the side-by-side -side is in these spots or spots that are more than a lap down or a lap or more down. Looking at Swavern and Bewalda. Fighting for the final spot inside the top 20. Well, up the road, Aaron Raymond continued his charge back to the field. Remember, Raymond was one of the first drivers to come to pit road. 
ended up laps down because of this. He got the lucky dog and then had to stay out again in order to get back onto the lead lap. He has been slowly but surely cutting through this field, trying to fight back towards the top. Scott Rankin currently leads the way. Brennan Gregg in second. Jim Duda in third. Michael Gudge is a driver that has fought very fiercely for a lot of these spots in races past. Can't see him letting Raymond go without a fight. Oh, a lock up on the top shelf there for Cody Ricketts. But he was bouncing down through the racetrack and nearly wrecked it into the wall. Rap trying to cut off Raymond. They're working to really keep this six truck at bay here. Raymond pinches Rap up towards the outside wall. And the number six will take it down low, put Aaron Raymond finally into the top five. Fights on for second. Rankin started to open up a gap as Jim Duda fights with Brennan Gregg. Oh, contact! They cannot keep it out of each other here as uh, they're gonna door again down the front stretch. Make it three as we enter turn number one. They can't do this, they hit again. That's four hits in the span of a lap. And Jim Duno gets through, Greg's not happy, pays back the favor, shoves him up the track. Bump and run into a crossover. Now will Jim Duda repay the favor in kind? Looking like he will not. Could we see Brandon Gray hang on for a second? He's gonna try for it. Duda gives him a bit of a run to the back bumper and a big block, high and low! Man, Brandon Gregg really working a mirror drive like crazy here, keeping Duda behind and that is letting Aaron Raymond Sorry, it's letting Scott Rankin pull out an absolutely monumental drive up the road. Jim Duda's about to put the back bumper to the 27 now. On board with Duda as he sands it in deep. Will he get to the back bumper of the rusty wrench Toyota Tundra? The thought was there, he's keeping it out of it for now, he's keeping it clean. Oh, and Duda's into the outside wall. That'll cost him big time. And so comes to a close, the war for number two. Oh, and another one started to pick up as Rap is pushed up the track by a ring gone. And that forces him three wide now with Baloo and Rap. Still have to put through the ringer this race as well, and he'll manage to stop the bleeding at 13th. Under 20 laps to go. And just look at the amount of trucks that are all piled up in this one battle pack. Luigi Gonzalez right now holds the lucky dog. Spot in contact. Rap goes around. And somehow we save it. Huge save there for Rap and Moore. Holy cow. Take a look at this moment coming into the turn number one. As Dale Rapp got in there big time with Mike Bagwell, and they nearly wrecked huge in the turn one. Bagwell sent it in, and Dale Rapp almost goes around. What a save! Good old short track racing underway from Newton, Iowa. Gutcher now trying to fight it out with John held for sixth. 
Held, I think, is really impressed in his debut. I mean, that truck has seen better days, but in these first two races, he has proven he's got a lot of pace underneath him. As Michael Gudger works to the outside, John Held down on the inside. John Holliday and Cody Ricketts in the fray as well, just a little ways behind. Trying to keep Rincon, Bailey, all at bay. The 72 truck pulls clear. Started to lose my breath here. I've had the hard a chance to breathe all race long, let alone give ye old vocal cords a rest, but that's the way we like to see it. Tell you what, these guys are making me earn my paycheck tonight. I mean, this has been absolutely fantastic. We look back to Ricketts, Holiday, Rincon, and Bailey. And Brandon Groover will take it to pit road. Groover was not able to make it to the ends with a dozen laps to go. The driver of the 41 truck is into the pits. What does this spell for the rest of the pack? With only a dozen laps to go. Dodger once again getting it alongside with John Held as Held takes it to the inside. Oh, contact up the track goes Gudger. And John Held in the Coors Life 47 shoves his way through into sixth. Gudger going to let him have it. Although still looking to apply some pressure and hope that maybe Held makes a mistake. Ten laps to go from the Iowa Speedway. don't even know where to look at this one. I mean, there's been so much that's been going on. So much has transpired over such a short span of time. Right now, the 72 of Cody Ricketts hanging on to the four-truck grudge match with uh, John Holliday, George Rincon, and Zane Bailey to the fray. But you could get a fifth driver, Julian Ballou, trying to throw his hand to the ring. And then you got him as well, uh, just behind Bell, trying to get in on the party to boot. So there's still a lot of racing that's still yet to be had with less than 10 laps on the docket. Aaron Raymond going to take it with Paul Witt to the inside. Fights on for fourth. Raymond and Witt. Scrapping positions for fourth and fifth on the racetrack. Aaron Raymond continuing his crusade. Through the field, he's into the number four spot. Aaron Raymond gets up to fourth just behind Cody Ricketts and John Holiday getting the bit crossed up as well. Oh boy! As Holiday forces Ricketts way up the track. Still pinch him up to the outside line in the three and four. Ricketts pulls clear from the outside. As we continue to fight it out. Rincon and Bailey Amor still in the mix. And then the 15, well, 98 truck scored at the 15, still in the fray as well. Holy cow, what a race. Josh Berry, by the way, in there he is the one that is fighting for the lucky dog spot. Four laps to go. Rankin has pulled well clear up the road. The 
This battle for the uh, eighth position is right now the one to watch. As we continue to battle our way into the closing laps of racing action tonight. A caution now puts us to overtime. Looking though, for the most part, we're going to have enough fuel to make it to the end of the race. Two to go. And Rick is still trying to hang on against John Holiday and Moore. John Holiday trying to send it in deep in a turn number three. See if he can get back to the number 72 truck. But Scott Rankin with three seven tenths of a second. Back to Brennan Gregg trying to see if he can hang on. Gregg's closing in in a hurry. Is something wrong with Rankin? Closing in fast. Rankin out of the final quarter. Here comes the 27 the huge drive off of turn four. And just barely. Scott Rankin hangs on. The gap going from eight tenths of a second to less than two of the final lap. We'll have to find out what the heck happened to Rankin on that last lap there. That was a close one. But for the first time, the TNGG IEL Truck Series will sport an Australian in victory lane. That is some absolutely immaculate form on those donuts. We look at that circle down there. I mean, that does not get much better than that. I give him a 10 out of 10 for the smoke show on the front straightaway. Good stuff for Scott Rankin, burning it down on the front stretch. Lenny Barnard, the flag man, know who won this race tonight. It was an absolutely insane night of racing action. And at the end of 150 laps and six yellow flags later, it is Scott Rankin to take a huge win here in this one with Brennan Gregg in the number two spot, less than two tenths of a second back. Jim Duda picks it up in third with Aaron Raymond in fourth. Paul Witt will close out the top five. John Held in sixth, Michael Gutcher seventh, Cody Rick is in eighth, John Holiday ninth, and Rincon rounds out the top 10. Zane Bailey, Julian Ballou, Thomas Lane Jr., Dale Rapp, and Robert Amar were the last trucks to finish on the lead lap. Josh Berry, Noah Swafford, Zachary Gruber, Luigi Gonzalez, Mike Bagwell, Ryan McRoberts, John Bowalda Jr., all finishing one lap down. Three down was Brandon Gruber, eight down from Mike Allen and Jeff Gilmore being nine down. And the driver's not finishing the race in action here tonight. You, of course, had RJ Buchanan, Mike Campbell, Tom Golker, Rick Schneider, Mark Morton, LeBon Van Leer, Carson Baytol, and Selena Thompson did not make the start here tonight. A wild way to close out racing action tonight. Let's take a rundown and uh, see if we can get a chat here with all of the podium drivers here at the end of what was certainly a race to remember. And we will, of course, look to uh, kick things off first and foremost with the driver that brings it home in victory lane. It is Scott Rankin who will come home. Last, uh, last week he finished on the podium. This week he's taking the 49 truck to victory lane. Scott, what an absolutely incredible way to take the race win here tonight. You started uh, outside pull. You come home and make the most of it where it counts. But what happened on the final lap for the slow and pace? I just want to. I just want to do a formation finish. Um, Brennan, Brennan and I work so hard together, and Brennan deserves a lot of respect at the moment. I think we were just chatting about it. He's on like a, a five, six race podium streak. So the man's uh, an impeccable driver. A lot of communication, a lot of working together here today, talking to things. So uh, I wanted to show him the respect he deserves, and uh, damn, did he deserve it? Well, you definitely were able to come home and. Uh secure a very hard-fought race win. I mean, you raced big with Brandon Gregg and along with Aaron Raymond earlier on in this race. I know uh, the tensions have not been <laughs> pleasant between you and the six truck as of late, but uh, coming up on top after such a rough race at Phoenix that saw a shock podium, it's got to be big for you. 
Yeah, man. Um, I yeah, last week was was not the easiest. Um, if you have a look at the last two races, even though Phoenix has been wiped out, I think the big brain strategy is to go long. Um, what we recognized fairly early on in that run was that you had to clutch it to make it. Um, we put ourselves in a great position. And the other thing I was talking to Brennan about, man, is this thing is so loose on fresh tires. It's so loose. If anything is going to happen, it's going to be on that fresh tires. Once the tires are stabilized out, everyone's sort of spread out. So you just, you can't undercut. The, la the last two times I've gone for the undercut strategy, the caution has happened immediately. So I, you know, no more of that. It's cost me four laps over the last two races. So there's, there'll be no more of that. So um, yeah, you know, you gotta try things. You gotta test things. You gotta make mistakes. But um, I think I think the big one I want to ticket is is race management today. Uh, if you have a look at the last couple of weeks, it's it's just been race management, season management. I want to get to that points lead and and uh, I want to control it from there. And it's it's about using your brain here. Kind of talking a little bit more about race management here. Uh, you were one of the last drivers to come down to pit road. You were going for an overcut strategy, and when everyone else came down to the lane, you stayed out a couple laps longer, and it ended up perfectly in your favor with that caution fly that came out. Walk through what the strategy call was there. Yeah, um, we realized we were looking at numbers when that caution came in. So I think we, we entered the pit lane on 55 and exited on 56, and I'm saying, man, we're like seven laps short on gas here. We are like seven or eight laps short on gas. So if that race went green, we had it in the bag because everyone else would have would have had to a pit. Um, Brennan had to come in a lap earlier than me, which meant he had more fuel to save. But at the same time, it was only 0.2. It was sort of a, a quarter of a gallon. Um, so he would have got the undercut, but he would have had to save more fuel. So it would have been about talking about that. But um, I realized very early on, I went up, I had to go up at, at Aaron, and I just said, yeah, it's not going to happen. Um, not here, not with the way that Aaron... Aaron, look, respect to him, quick, but he is right on your door. You get no inches. So, yeah, it's sometimes it's about just figuring it out, finding a different way. Um, the big key in that race was actually Jim Duda. You take Jim Duda out of that one, um, Aaron changes things a little bit. Um you know, may, maybe I stay a little bit closer to Aaron, but we, we realized very, very early on, I think it was j just after I, my last attempt at Aaron, I, I sort of had a look at the fuel and I went, guys, look, we've just got to save. We, we've got track position. I've got this huge margin. I've got this huge hole to use. So let's just save, save, save. And I think Paul Witt realized it at exactly the same time as well. So. Well, it was a hard-fought race win, and we'll see if you can double it up as well when we go racing next week in Bristol, Tennessee. Oh, get, get me out of Bristol. Get me out. That might be one of those races where I'm just looking to score points that night. It'll be not about saving the last time we're there. I was loose as anything. Uh, I want to say a big shout out to uh, to everyone that makes it possible uh, from the Wanted Goons crew. Um, and a big shout out to the guys that got me racing over here. I'm having a lot of fun. It's, you know, it's taking your head. I want to say a big shout out over the last couple of weeks. I've not used my head in the greatest uh, ways that really, really poor opportunities. And uh, Robert Emerald and Dale Rapp have copped the brunt of that. Um, so I want to apologize to those guys. I really want to earn their respect back. And boy, do I need to earn their respect back. Um, but yeah, other than that, Clutch One, big shout out to Clutch One, uh, NeuroPower. NeuroPower have just come on board as a personal sponsor uh, for anyone NeuroDivergent. Uh, helping them get into racing could lead to some some opportunities to drive some cars in real life, which I'm really, really excited about. Big shout out to Brennan Greg and uh, the rest of the drivers um, down at Average Joe Motorsports, even Ryan Mc. Roberts in there chatting away to us and uh, yeah I, I hope for uh, for all the boys they're, they're all a bit frustrated at the moment so hopefully we see them back next week at Bristol I'm Scott Rankin joining us up here from Victory Lane after a hard oh, fought yeah. race in Newton Iowa <laughs> we'll look to uh, go down and uh, give a chat here now with Brennan Gregg the driver that was able to come home and pick up the number two spot it is Brennan Gregg finishing just a couple tenths of a second behind Scott Rankin here tonight and uh well, Brandon, I'm going to focus first up on that fierce battle you had with Jim Duda for that number two spot. I thought you were going to take each other out. I mean, walk us through what that was like with about 20 to go. Uh, well, he got to the inside of me. Uh, I think it was through three and four. Drove me up the track a little bit. I uh, wasn't very happy about that, so ran him down just a, just a tiny bit. Uh, next lap, uh, got the crossover done after a little, little bit of a bump and run. And then just kind of fed him dirty air until the end of that race. Uh, lucky it worked out the way it did. Uh, like Scott Rankin, you are one of the trucks that opted not to pit until the uh, caution flag came out, whereas most of the other field came down uh, just before the yellow flag was set to come out. Were you hoping for that caution to come out and save the strategy late in the race? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, either way, I, I was working with uh, Scott on it, uh, but either way, it would have been uh, beneficial for us to stay out for as long as we did. With a caution, trapped everyone, uh, lap down, 
gave us a uh, track position. If not, we still we still didn't have to save as much towards the end of the run, so that was a huge benefit to uh, us either way. And we look forward now to uh, Bristol Motor Speedway. It's known as the last great Coliseum, and while it may be one of the shortest tracks on the schedule, it is far from the slowest track on the schedule. The speeds are comparable to that of what we get here at Iowa on a track that is so much more tighter. It's a track where you can run, but you can't hide. What's going to be the strategy to survive in Bristol? Uh, Bristol has got to be one of my favorite tracks. Uh, had some pretty decent success at the last couple races that we've had there. Uh, overall, I think it's going to be whoever can hold the outside. Uh, tire age doesn't really matter. So it could just come down to a track position race for the most part. Well, we'll let you get back to celebrating. Congratulations on taking that number two. We'll see if we can double up the podiums next week in Tennessee. Thank you. That was Brennan Gregg joining us up here in the broadcast booth after finishing runner-up to Scott Rankin after what was an absolutely wild race here tonight. This race was nothing short of absolutely phenomenal. I had an, absolutely bla an absolute blast of a time with racing action here tonight. And don't forget... There's a lot coming on up over the next week as well. Two extremely huge races with the Classic IndyCar Series kicking off their season just after the VSCA Sports Car Championships, 12 hours of Sebring. And then, of course, tomorrow night, join us on Sunday night for the ASRL Next Gen Cup Series. They'll go racing in the Windy City on the streets of Chicago for race number seven. For myself, Noel Rempel, that's all we got time for here tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. What an absolutely epic show this was. We will see you all next week when we go racing at the last great Coliseum.